Twitter check. All right, so I'm getting a, uh, hmm, I'm getting a small. Here, I'm gonna try closing this and open this right back. BRB. All right. And there we go. Okay, it just didn't like that part. Boom. The event has begun. All right. Sorry, folks. I'm like tabbing around here, making sure we got everything uh, structured and organized. It's looking good. Looking good. All right. Let's get this thing. Uh, let's get this thing started. Uh, if you don't know, my name is Ryan. Uh, no autopilot. Turner. Let me turn on my camera for you so you can see my beautiful face. It's Five a.m. here, so uh, mind the uh, the dark, moody bedroom here. But uh, but yeah. So welcome. Uh, today we are hosting a game demo day. Uh, what it is is a celebration of the various games that are building within the gaming startup collective community. So, uh, speaking of which, we have a bunch of projects that we're going to be presenting today. Uh, we have Rob from Salty Sharks. Shout out to Rob. We have Gameland, Vincent over at Gameland. And we have Philip from Puzzled. And we have a few more uh, additional guests that are popping in here as well. Uh, we also have a group of panelists, judges. So these are folks who are going to be reviewing uh, the games that are presenting today. And at the end of the session, we're going to vote on what they find the most interesting or novel. Okay. And then the winner from today's session uh, and the other two session hosting later today will be piled into a, uh, a finale where we have a bunch of awesome prizes that we put together. Uh, speaking of which, we should probably take a moment to shout out all of our sponsors. Uh, let's start with Sequence, Sequence XYZ. Um, they have put up a handful of credits to their platform, allowing game developers to unlock like thousands and th thousands of dollars worth of uh, uh, free uh, free access to their platform to build out their their game. Um, we also have Game Seven. So Game Seven came to us and put in a bit of money for our cash prize pool. So appreciate that. We have uh, Fluke from uh, Knights of the Ether, which is a Web3 game um, that is also kind of in uh, in the market for potential game dev support and help. We have Web3GG from Juan. Shout out to Juan. Of course, we can't miss Arbitrum. Arbitrum DAO uh, giving our community a small grant to go ahead and uh, kind of build out our community. We got BlockSafe. Uh, who provides blockchain technology uh, support. And we have Calvin's Forge, which is a Web3 VC idea house. The Roundtable, which does uh, go-to-market planning and game testing services. And the Blockchain Game Alliance, which is, you know, uh, the original home of Web3 game development. So, with all that said, let's go ahead and let's lay the ground rules. Each team is going to have 10 minutes to go ahead and present their game, at the end of which we'll field a few questions from our guest panelists. Uh, panelists, if you want to come on the stage, feel free. If you prefer and you're more comfortable in the audience, that's A-OK -okay too. Um, so yeah, so we'll have each game present. At the end, we'll have a few questions. And then in the finale, our panelists will vote or what project they feel the most interesting or novel. With that said, I'm going to mute. I'm going to pass it over to Rob. Rob from Salty Sharks. Take it away. Thanks very much, Ryan. Um, yeah, so I'll just do a share screen as well. Okay, so thanks very much. Uh, my name is Rob Canelli. I'm from Aquatic Metaverse, which is an Australian registered uh, company and uh, owner of the Salty Sharks brand. So a little bit first about um, my background. Uh, I've spent the last 25 years in uh, executive leadership, management, uh, business operations and development roles 
uh, across a range of industries and companies, from uh, which is one of them, plus also state uh, universities, um, the largest regional university in Queensland, uh, and, and private enterprise. Um, but aside from that, uh, throughout my life, I've had two major passions as well, one of which is the ocean uh, and diving. So I'm a, a rescue diver qualified diver uh, and the other one is uh, writing so I'm a published author of fiction novels um, and I'm very passionate about storytelling I decided uh, just over two and a half years ago nearly three years ago to combine these passions together uh, and create a web3 brand uh, focused on shark conservation so we're an entertainment and education brand um, focused on marine species conservation, not just sharks, but predominantly sharks. Um, and we approach this um, for a number of reasons. One, um, shark populations are in uh, massive decline around the world. Uh, there is 75 species of shark that are on the critically endangered list. Over 70% of sharks um, are on the threatened or worse category as well. Um, so for a species that's been around longer than dinosaurs, um, you know, it's a horrible situation we now face where they could potentially go extinct on our watch. Um, the importance of an alpha predator like a shark to the ocean ecosystem just cannot be uh, overstated. It's, it's incredibly important. Um, and it's important that we work to redress uh, this issue, predominantly from overfishing, shark fin fishing, uh, and also to address the um, mindset that sharks are the bad guys. Um, you know, you just have to look at the mainstream media to see the, uh, the difference. Um, you know, when there's an interaction between humans and snakes and spiders, uh, it's a bite or they're defending their territory. Uh, with sharks, it's shark infested waters. It's shark attack. Uh, it's a shark mauling. You know, uh, it's always the, 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 the usage, the, the words that are being used are evocative, provocative, uh, and uh, and always creating that sense of fear or, or malice or, or ill intent. Uh, and it couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, I've dived with plenty of sharks in my time. And, um, you know, if you respect their environment and habitat, um, you know, most of the 99% of the interactions are completely harmless. Uh, we're not their preferred food source. Um, any interactions generally are mistaken. My identity. God. Uh, they're just finding out who we are and what we are and, the only appendage they have is their mouth. So uh, usually we end up worse for wear. But uh, look, the way to change people's hearts and minds is through engaging them uh, in story, engaging them in something that allows them to feel a connection to the character, feel a connection to the species, uh, and to start thinking about them in a different way. So we built a multiverse, uh, if you will, based on story, where the sharks uh, are the heroes, not the villains. Uh, and it's not just sharks, it's also mermaids, uh, but it's also a number of species of sharks as well. And what we do is we weave that story, we weave that um, narrative, if you will, through all of the different elements of our entertainment products and our education products. Now, in this presentation today, I'm only going to focus on one of the games. We've got four published to date, but the flagship, if you will, is our uh, digital trading card game called The Uprising. So I'm going to take you through that. Um, but, you know, I do obviously also want to mention that, you know, there is more to our brand than just the game. There's also our education facilities uh, in metaverse-based education facilities uh, and also our conservation because we are partnered with uh, Fins Attached uh, in the US um, and, apologies, uh, and that is a, um, a not-for-profit charity and research institute in the US uh, where we um, raise funds for shark tags for them when they go out and do shark tagging expeditions um, and they apply those sharks and we gather important information and data to help the conservation effort. But I won't go too much into that. I want to take you through uh, the uprising game. So I'll start with the game guide and then I'll take you through some of the actual gameplay as well. So I just need to switch the window here briefly. Uh oh, did we leave you? Did we lose you there, Rob? Looks like Rob may have got rugged. 
The no. shark ate him. The shark ate him. Actually, uh, you know, the whole premise of his project is to change the narrative on sharks. So maybe leading with the shark ate him. <laughs> maybe was he, he, the he swam away with the shark. That's the better one. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Let's turn a positive note to this. Hey, Rob, I see you out there in the uh, audience there. Welcome back, mate. Sharky I have, misclick. <laughs> I have no idea what the hell happened there. So my apologies. Um, let me just okay. try again. Yes, please. To reshare that screen. So. Now, uh, if I bring that back up, hopefully it won't drop me out again. But please let me know if it does. Um, okay. So turn on my camera. Um, so yes, the uprising game. So it's free to play. It's a strategy game meets um, traditional trading card game. So it's a little bit different to uh, previous games where you might have a, a deck of cards you can select cards from and they attack other cards, uh, individual cards. In this game, you have a deck of five cards and your opponent has a deck of five cards and you can select from a multitude of cards to fill that deck and you're up against their deck in a competition. So. There's a number of game modes. There's multiplayer mode, single player skirmish, and single player campaign mode. Uh, in it, you can earn points, which is slivers of silver as you play the games. Uh, you use those with pieces of eight to buy class specializations, equipment, and unlock additional content. So to give you an idea, again, everything sort of revolves or, or interweaves the story into the uh, game itself. So the orders that you see here are uh, are what's the NFTs are broken up into these seven orders. Each of those orders represents a class in the actual game. There are also uh, adversaries. So there are two adversaries that the AI controls if you're playing single player games, the illegal fishing pirates and the Atlanteans. You'll get to see some of those shortly. And there's different statistics, et cetera, that each of the cards have. There's also a number of different rarities of cards. So you've got starter pack card, you've got a generic card, uh, you've got a silver and you've got a gold rank card. Um, you've also got different battlegrounds that the battles are taking place on. So the board background can be one of 11, uh, 11 different boards. And each of those boards will have slightly different uh, effects, either positive or negative, to certain classes that are in your deck. As you progress the game and as you buy upgrades and class specializations, et cetera, you can actually mitigate some of those uh, negative effects, which is quite good uh, for your deck as well. Uh, this is an example of what the board looks like um, and what the cards look like as you're playing. I'll take you through the roles a, a bit later as we go through the game. Uh, this is what the solo campaign looks like. So the solo campaign actually mirrors uh, adventure stories that we've already written in the, uh, the lore of the multiverse. Uh, and these are also represented in our already published comics as well. So the first solo campaign that you'll do actually mirrors the adventures of the Salty Seven. So it's a five-part campaign battle, progressing you know, in difficulty as you go through it, um, with the final boss battle uh, being something from the story that you will know if you've uh, read the story or the, or the comics. Um, and then we've got the different cards, as I mentioned. So your starter pack, your generic pack, your Genesis collection, which are the NFTs, uh, and specials. Now, the specials are unlocked by doing various quests uh, in the game and completing campaigns, but they're also unlocked by uh, certain other activities, such as you know invitations to the game for other people, um, uh, upgrading certain cards and having people you've invited do the same. So there's a whole invitation system designed around the marketing of the game and when it's launched. Uh, and some of these specials include um, an ambassador series of cards. Now, the Ambassador series of cards are a very special set of cards that are based off uh, celebrities that are focused on ocean conservation. So we have um, one A-list celebrity who I uh, am not able to name just today, uh, who has signed on as becoming our first ambassador. Uh, their one of one NFT has been created. That will be auctioned for charity, for uh, their charity, plus also the um, conservation effort behind the brand. Uh, and their uh, card will be available as a generic card for Web2 players to, to uh, win and unlock, as well as an NFT version of the NFT version, which whoever wins that or uh, in the auction can actually play that in the game. 
but also they get the benefits of NFTs in the game, which are renting those out to other players uh, and upgrade and re-upgrade uh, and replacing upgrades on those cards. So they're quite uh, unique. So someone hey, will have that opportunity. Yep. Just a heads up, three minutes. Oh, I better get into the game then. All right. So I'll just uh, close that down and we'll just jump into the game. Apologies for that. Uh, where have we got here? Also, hats off to Rob for going first. It's not easy going first. There we go. So hopefully you'll get the audio in this as well. So this is the uh, actual game. So you've got your collection and you can build your decks here with these cards. Obviously, I've just got the seven starter cards here at the moment and you build a deck of five cards in any particular game. Uh, and when you go in to play a game, we'll just do a solo match. Okay, and then you start into the game. So there's th something I didn't get a chance to mention yet is there's two different ways to win a game. One way is by defeating the opponent's deck, killing off all their cards. The other way to defeat them is actually de defeating their morale, so causing them to rout. And you do that by lowering their morale score to zero. There's numbers of special attacks which attack morale specifically. Also, when cards are killed, uh, it reduces the overall morale score by their leadership score plus a bonus as well. So there's different ways of reducing that. And there are different deck combinations you can build and attack combinations with the special attacks which actually focus on being a morale busting type deck. So quite an interesting uh, additional way of, uh, of winning a battle. So just to take you through some of the actual um, particular moves, uh, the dice is another feature which is a bit different to most trading card games. It's designed to add a little bit of variability uh, to the game and create an opportunity um, for even though you might have a card with some great stats, you might just do what I did and roll a one for their six and you don't do as much damage as you might have done. So there's a little bit of variance to it based on the um, uh, based on the type, uh, the dice roll you make. And plus if they're, um, if the cards are tapped, they roll disadvantage. And uh, if you have certain abilities, you'll roll advantage as well. So. Fantastic. So there you go. Fantastic. So. Yeah, that's the game. Uh, how much time we got left? All done? Uh, any last uh, comments there, Rob? And then we'll pass it over to the judges for any potential questions. Sure. Um, all I would suggest is that uh, the game is at 20% from completion. Um, we, are, we have a grant application actually at the moment uh, with uh, Arbitrum uh, to complete the rest of the game and, and ready it for launch. So um, if people want to get involved, they can reach out to us on Twitter. They can join our Discord, see a lot more information on that, on that in Discord. Uh, and obviously, we're open uh, to talking with any investors around the investment as well. And thank you for your opportunity to present. Fantastic. So folks, if you want to get in contact with Rob, I have all of his uh, contact information. It'll be distributed after the event. You can also catch him on our socials. We've been talking about his project quite a bit. So pass it over to the panelist judges. Any questions, comments for Rob? This is from Matt. Which platform are you planning to ship the game on? Oh, um, so it's built in Unity, uh, and we are looking at uh, launching it on mobile and web-based, so Android, um, iOS, uh, and, and web platforms. Obviously, we're open to Hyperplay or um, you know, Steam and, and those sort of ones, but we haven't decided exactly on that yet, but it will be launched on mobile and web. Fantastic. Next question. And we're going to go rapid fire on these because we got five minutes to get through them here. Shai says, uh, can you talk about the wallet experience that is planned? Yeah, so the beauty of the Web3 uh, web integration of this is it's not uh, over the top. There is a, um, a wallet connection to allow people with the NFTs to add those NFTs to their collection and play the NFTs. However, if you don't have any of the NFTs or you're not into Web3, there's no actual uh, requirement to connect a wallet. Um, you can play with the generic cards purchased off the website uh, as well as the starter cards, and you're not disadvantaged for doing that. It is entirely possible to play the game and win the game and do really well without the NFTs, but the NFTs add certain benefits. 
such as and, being able to rent them and earn passive income and upgrade them differently and in different combinations. All right. I'm going to read the uh, the next question here, and then uh, we're going to have to move on to the next game. But Rob, you can probably answer the uh, other questions if you don't quite catch in the uh, in the chat itself. So okay. Gaspode says, you may have touched on it, but is it going to be gated and or Web2 login? It'll be email address uh, and password uh, will be the only um, barriers to logging in. So email address and password, and you can create an account. Fantastic. Rob, again, great job going first. Uh, takes a lot of bravery and courage to do that. And your game looks awesome. So it's a win-win there. Thank you so um, much. Yeah. Okay. Moving on over. Next up, we have Land, Labor, and Capital. Calvin slash DV. Welcome. Welcome, friends. Can you hear us? Calvin slash DV, are you out there? Yeah, I can hear you. Hey, hey, how are you? I'm doing good. Uh, Fantastic. Yeah. So I'll go ahead and I'll I'll hand it over to you. Um, so try and aim for about ten minutes to present. We'll do about five minutes of question and answers at the end. And uh, yeah, the stage is all yours, sir. Please please share your game with us. All right. Sounds good. Uh, here, let me just share my screen. Uh, can everyone see this? Yes. All right. Uh, yeah, we're Land Labor Capital. We're uh, on-chain tycoon game. Currently, we're on a bunch of networks: Arbitrum, uh, Polygon, and Base, Hop BNB. And basically, the core gameplay of our of our game is expanding your business empire within the bounds of the game world. Uh you know, you start off with a deposit and then you can use that to build businesses, you know, find opportunities and try to make more and more money uh, through all the interesting in-game mechanics that we have. So one of the things that, one of the unique aspects of our game is we have this like pseudo stock market where in the future player owned companies will be able to kind of go public within the game world and raise money from other players. Like right now we only have this company, which is a admin controlled company. Uh, the way that it works is whenever someone trades on the in-game market, they pay a small fee and that's distributed as dividends to the shareholders of this uh, Liquidiverse company. Uh, and the in-game market is used for basically everything. So, for example, if we look at like this firm, this wind turbine firm, you could see the or uh, this glass factory. Like they're all using inputs like you know labor or materials, and then they're producing some output that they sell on the market. Uh, and so the kind of core motivating idea behind all this is that you would. Each each player's you know revenue stream is someone else's you know input, and there's kind of this idea of a circular flow based economy instead of a traditional sinks and sources economy that you usually see in a you know multiplayer game like this. Uh, another interesting thing is we've recently uh, we got an Arbitrum Questbook grant, and we've been. Uh, slowly integrating generative ai into our game so first of all all these all these assets that we've been using for the firms and the land they're all coming from scenario which is a basically a generative ai company that focuses entirely on making game assets and making game ready assets like stable diffusion and other like larger uh generative ai stuff can produce high quality content but it also it often struggles to make something that's visually cohesive with everything else that you have whereas you can see that scenario has been doing a really good job making like interesting and visually cohesive uh elements for our game uh also something we've been working on very recently like within the past few days is allowing players to create custom products so if they wanted to 
uh, launch their own, if they had an idea for a product that people, that the NPCs might want to buy, they can create it with uh, this UI, you know, add ingredients, set a R&D endowment. Uh, how the R&D endowments work is basically you stake a certain amount of our in-game currency, and then that's kind of treated as if it was constantly funding the research and development of the product. And so that affects its quality. Um, and you can see we've we've had a, more than a few people create custom products and try to sell them in their retail stores in game. Uh, and just very recently, we've integrated that as well with Scenario. You can see we have icons now for each custom product generated by Scenario. And we've really been focusing on modability and making the the gameplay experience extendable not just for you know custom products but also in the future entirely different in-game world like let's say a board ape themed world where everything was the economy was based around bananas and you could have like banana farms you know like i don't know ape villages and then people from the board ape community could then play that game with the you know with their nfts and with their whole you know ecosystem around that um quick uh, yeah, quick check in on a lot of quick we've... check in on time so you got uh, mm -hmm. about two minutes sir uh, anything else you want to share before you move on to questions for you um i think I think I'm more or less ready for questions. Cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll say uh, this project is super interesting. Um, we did have a question in the chat. Is it on chain? And if so, can you uh, one here powering all off all the you know uh like backing is on chain but it's not completely on chain powering on Other mic thing. on gotcha fantastic yeah sorry folks i think uh one of us rugged there for a second apologize for dropping in and out um okay so panelists any questions you would like to ask for the uh land labor capital team Yes. Um, so this is like a general question. I just, I like to ask various game founders, what is the target audience that you're looking to acquire specifically when it comes to region, uh, kind of device type, and then also um, just kind of like some of the other games that they've like worked with. It, having a really good understanding of that, I think helps you go to market. Do you have a, a very structured plan for that? Um, well, we've been seeing... I'd say that generally we're targeting desktop, you know, that's where most of the MetaMask users are. But we've been seeing a lot of people from a lot of different places be interested in the game. Like, uh, one of our biggest users is this Ukrainian guy who built, like, a a massive empire within game that we just totally didn't expect. Um, so I'd say that we'll we have, like, a general idea that this will be like for you know north american european users like we're definitely not limiting ourselves to that because there's a lot of you know people who are interested in these kind of games really quick follow-up like what does that traction current look like because it sounds like you have people playing the game and you know putting in some money yeah uh well we have like i think a little bit more than a thousand registered users right now uh, we haven't really been marketing that, that heavily. That's the second phase of our grant is to focus more on marketing. But we've been, you know, doing beta tests, and right now we, you know,
Hello? Can you, can you not hear anything? Hey, everybody, just hang, hang tight. I think the, some audio issues, then we'll get sorted in a minute. Yeah, the, can you guys hear me now? You're back, Ryan. Woo! All right. Let's power through before we get rugged. Uh, so sorry for cutting that short there, uh, um, Land Labor Capital. There are some additional questions for you in the chat, though, that we didn't get a chance to answer. Uh, so make sure we check in on those. And then Vincent from Gameland. You are up, my friend. Okay. So you can hear me, right? Yeah, coming through loud and clear. Okay, let me share my screen. It's okay now. But okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I can, can hear you. Can now you it's okay. Now it's okay. Okay. Hi everyone. My name is Vincent, the founder of Gameland. Uh Gameland is a uh, AI tools and games. And in 2023, we were incubated by the OS Cam. This came from India. And now we're also in three DAO program. This is backed by Husky. And 2022, we incubated by Chromia. Yeah, and we also BNB Growth Partner. And we also, in 2020, we are set by Nvidia Inception Program. Yeah, so what's Gamelan doing? Gamelan is a decentralized GameFi intelligent tools platform and, OA and AI open market training AI for games. So we try to slow some problem because we try we try when we try to communicate with the game studio the small team they don't they don't have enough uh, people to develop the module to collect the data to analyze the player to make the to base on the data to build up the market strategy immediately and the second part the player there's no place to find it. The, the developer or data scientist there's no place for them to share or sell their their asset their their, their, their product to the everyone to connect with the game studio or players. So we will bring the three features for, for users to use. First part, we will provide AI open market. We help the data scientists and developer help them to turn help them help them to turn their their modules or data set into NFT NFT access. So all the users can buy their NFT access as a uh, can buy the NFT access, get the permission to download or try to use the modules. So all the all the uh, data scientists can get the reward from this from the marketplace. And second, and, and the most important thing, the game studio can based on the need to search a different module or data set to use on, on this market or try to connect, try to make a connect with some developer. And the next thing is we will provide a search engine for the for the users to use. Many people to play the game, they want to understand uh, the game situation, the player profile. But if the game studio want to pro provide a report, 
space is very expensive for them to, to cooperate with the analyze company. So we, this part we open inside is free for the game studio to use or user to use. We can also allow you to compare with the different game in these tools so you can totally understand uh, the, the game data, uh, uh, the game data. And the, the, last thing, the last thing is marketing tools. This is the most important thing for the game studio. Yeah, we will provide some AI based data and AI module to build up some um, tools for the users to use or the game studio to use. I will, I will try to explain this, this part later. The first part, AI open market. Yeah, this will be a store for a user to buy or sell, training this, this uh, access, NFT access, this uh, represent uh, the modules or data set. So the, the, the users can get the uh, permission this, uh, directly, so they don't need to, and they, they don't need to find, to try to find out some, the person to con communicate with them. Hey guys, I want to use your, 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 your AI module. Can you, can you get, uh, provide, uh, agree for me, uh, agree me to use that so they can use the NFT access as a permission. And the second part, all the users, if they, uh, they can train the AI for the game. In the future, we'll allow the user the module run on our platform, so you can you can train this AI module, uh, for uh, based on uh, based on your need, so that you can use the AI module directly by the API. Yeah, and the most important thing, we can help you to share all the thing to the everyone, so each one can see or try to connect with you. And the search open inside. Yeah, now we already range you. Or our platform already uh, analyzes almost almost uh, three uh, three hundred games. Now we support BNB, Polygon, Arbitron, and it's free and chain. Now it, uh, all the user can use this 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 place for free. And in the future, we will we'll base on this data try to build up the game chat AI. This tool is to help you to develop the smart contract. This can help the traditional game studio to slow the slow the time uh, to slow the time to learn how to develop a Web3 game. I will I will I, I will I will show the video uh, uh, later. Yeah. This is our marketing tools. Now in the future we will provide a game chat AI. This will help you to understand your your the game studio need to help you to to help you to develop the smart contract and help you to develop deploy all the smart contract on chain one by one create buttons, and the second part is AI advisors. This is for the game studio, yeah. And and the and and the third is game chat block. This we will help you pro uh the 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 game studio can use the game chat block as an NPC for the user to use. They can ask the question for them. Maybe they can set the different, uh, set, set, set uh, the, some uh, NPC question for the user to ask. Maybe they can get, also can uh, send the reward to the user directly. And the last one is game assistant. This is the most important thing. We provide these tools for, for, the, for, for the player to, to, to use. We help the player to uh, analyze the game, to help them to play the game and generalize the personalized suggestion for them to play how to play the, how to play the car how to uh, to win yeah now this is our game land structure and on the right side we will we will have many people we provide some module data set on training or earning uh, training training skills to our platform so the user can 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 see our products ai open market module and data set and then and we will use based on this our uh, our product to provide the AI the AI API service for the game studio to use AI AI search engine AI market to marketing tools and game chat game chat robots for the game studio and game users. No, hey Vincent, this... just a heads up. You get okay. uh, three minutes, good sir. Three minutes. Okay, very quickly. This is our session. And now we already have some 33 partner analyze uh cooperate with 40 game studio and we have some revenue. Yeah, this is our partner. We cooperate with RS Matrix and Homies and the other game. We, we also cooperate with some uh excellent uh, platform. Yeah, this is our team. Our team have four years have 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 a rich is uh blockchain experience. And we totally understand 
the blockchain game and community, and we also have uh, uh, understand the DeFi, DeFi product and game five products. And yeah, la last year I was a uh, game five. In 2021, I was the DeFi product founder and a staking staking product. I we have spent a month to stay one million, one hundred millions on on our protocol. Yeah. This is our team. Sky is data expert, and Iris is our CMO. Yeah, Ling is our backend en engineer. Yeah, this this our try to raise CLAM four millions, provide ten percent token. Yeah, this is our token economy. Okay, that's all. I skip the token economy. Yeah. Yeah. So so two things that stood out to me on on Vincent's deck when I looked at it is number one, uh, revenue generated. That was a, I think it was a hundred thousand dollars, which is fantastic. No, and it oh, isn't actually, every day. Actually, oh, I have a, a a huge milestone I want to share with you guys, and I yeah, this day I we collaborate with the Boyas. Boya is the gaming company. It's the first made in the is the first game in the mainland China, Hong Kong, and Thailand. We provide a, a game analyst service for them and help. And the, the second part is customer AI game uh, game assistant developer this this product for for them to help them to uh, to analyze the game, provide some source for the users. Yeah. Fantastic. And another point I was going to say is it isn't every day that you meet someone who uh, developed a smart contract that had a hundred hundred million dollars TVL locked into it. So that's pretty nice. Um, okay. Panelists, I know we went through a little bit of deeper tech here. What questions do we have for Vincent from Gameland? I know I did. We did see one from Doctor. Uh, so are the AI N NFTs for NPC logic that can be used in game development? So it looks like he's looking for you to clarify the uh, the AI aspect. Vincent, you still there? Or did yeah. I rug? Okay. Okay. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I try to see yes. the questions. Nah, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the questions. Yeah, actually, I, I let me see. AI, AI open market slow the problem to address how to create AR logic. Yeah. AI open markets, we help the user. Maybe I I can share my product, my product, my product, my product. Wait for me. I test net. Mm. While you're minutes. pulling that up, let me ask you a couple quick questions from Sean. Uh, okay. He asked, is there an abstraction okay. layer? Actually, AI, AI, open, AI open market will allow the users to, uh, to upload their modules or data set on our platform. We help them to generalize, gener, gener, uh, generate the NFT access, uh, access. So the user, they can buy the NFT as are authorized. So they can use, they can, they can, they can use the authorized to download the module or try to train the module so they can they can get the reward from the from from the pro, uh, from the developer or from from gambling pl uh, platforms yeah and in the future we'll have a lot of my to do but the the base the base version now we provide the user to share or sell their 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 their, 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 their reward for the user to do the game studio yeah fantastic and then so last question uh, and if we could try and answer it uh, with brevity, that'd be great. This is from Shai. Uh, he asked about the abstraction layer. There's a planned SDK. Uh, and if you can discuss the cross-chain abilities. So maybe maybe some of that you can answer now, and the rest of it you could take in uh, in a chat message in general. I can I can answer it uh, right now. Yeah. And in the future, we will, we will provide an API uh, for you to to integrate so or SDK yeah and in the Q two uh now we support cross trends and uh, now we we support EVM and Solana right now so you can use our tool to analyze the Solana and EVM games NFT yeah okay fantastic all right thank you Vincent fantastic looking at the product you've built. Um, now thank you. we're thank moving you. on. Oh, 
Thanks, man. Thank you. Now we're moving on to Philip from Puzzle. How you doing, Philip? I'm doing okay. Can you guys hear me? We can hear you. We can see you. All, all right. Of the above. Sorry, I didn't rug myself trying to. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first all right, thing I to I'm going to hand it over to you. All right. You got uh, you got ten minutes starting now. All right. So I'll I'll share the if I can. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to have this running in the background a little bit while I talk about kind of our our history and how we started. Um, so. Puzzled was originally started in 2021, and we had uh, Michael Shmulevich and John Pasolacqua, uh, one who is a software architect and the other who is a uh, founder of a kind of an, an investment uh, family office, both based in Canada. They got together and thought um, the NFT phase is interesting because back then it was it was really the crazy time in NFTs, right? And they thought. Um, auctions are boring. Nothing has really changed in the auction system. So why don't we gamify the auction system for NFT marketplaces? Then they brought me on board and uh, a whole team of developers, mostly from Exilion Technologies. And we started working on this and everything that could happen to make it difficult uh, from the outside world while we were building it happened. Uh, at one point we had a, a developer working on this where he had to work from the basement with his laptop while the city was under attack from three different directions. Uh, like cause the craziest things that could possibly happen. Uh, I had to move to avoid a war zone, all kinds of things happened, but we got it built and we launched uh, right as FTX crashed. So there was a before FTX and an after FTX in the NFT market in many ways, uh, especially for us, <laughs> because before FTX crashed, there was a this craze about NFTs, there was interest in play to earn uh, a lot more than there is now. And the market wasn't entirely as matured as, as it is now. So there are a lot of things that we learned after that, that we couldn't have known before. So we built a game with a team that are specialized in FinTech projects. So we have, uh, currently we have a game with you know, microtransactions, different levels of payments during the game and a bidding war for pieces of a puzzle that once you win the puzzle, you win the NFT. So we have a prize system. And as all this kind of, uh, everything hit the proverbial fan in the NFT space, uh, I then had to go through and find out uh, how we could possibly fit into the new dynamics within games, within the NFT space, and a broader, uh, what exactly fit we could have. So it's interesting because I'm coming to you guys right now where we're pivoting from being an NFT marketplace with a gamified auction system to being a game platform where you can win prizes playing games. And the main reason we, uh, we started moving that way is after talking with uh, a lot of founders of collections and a lot of games, they found it interesting to be able to propose NFTs or other prizes in a game and have their <laughs> their game assets something that you can win in another game. So it's uh, bringing your game assets to other people through another game. So the more games, the, the merrier, I guess, in that sense. So that was an interesting uh, realization. But this is just to show that we were, were able to build something and we did get something out there. It, this is live right now on puzzle.space. You can go check it out for yourself if you're interested uh, in playing a game and perhaps even play against each other. We have Discord integration actually, <laughs> where you can talk with the other players while you're playing. Uh, that was really fun to test. We managed to test the game before we launched with uh, a group of investors to see what their interest was in kind of the more speculative side. And a group of kids, like uh, 10 to 12 year olds, and the feedback that we got from them because they were on a call is what caused us to add Discord integration. So you can yell at each other during the game and be like, oh, why did you take that piece? And that sort of thing. So we have this whole kind of test until you perfect the project. Um, the current game doesn't have any game breaking bugs. So we've tested it thoroughly. 
which if we hadn't, maybe we could have launched before the market changed. But now we're looking to pivot, which is what I was going to talk about next. Here's the team, it's Michael Shmulovich, John Pasolacqua, myself, and then our designer, business analyst, systems architect that jumped on. Um, and what I wanted to show you is we're, we're now looking at making more traditional games where you don't have to go through a, uh, a document or a tutorial like the one I showed you before to understand how it works. So we're trying to come out with four new games this year, a racing game, a tank game, a runner game, and a first person shooter where the first two that will come out will be scoreboard based. If you're at the top of the scoreboard within the amount of time that the prize provider for that game uh, sets in the parameters, then you win uh, the NFT or we're planning on expanding it to also include Steam games and things like that. The current game, by the way, is on Ethereum. Like you can have Ethereum NFTs and Polygon NFTs using the Matic currency for the games. And we're going to add Arbitrum shortly as we just got an Arbitrum gaming grant. Thank you for that, by the way. Um, and so, yeah, these are kind of the games that we're looking at adding. And we're also planning on expanding the prizes, like I was saying, to game codes from, for example, Steam, uh, special deals like coupons and things like that, uh, potentially even digital currency. and obviously tokens like we have had so far, NFTs and things like that. And we're planning on doing a lot more marketing hey, moving forward. Hello. Yeah. Oh, just quick, quick call on time. Got a couple couple minutes here. Perfect. Um, just want to make sure you have enough to, to hit any, any last key points for folks. All right. Uh, so right now we're working on building the racing game. Uh, tomorrow I have a call with a game development company that we're partnered with to go over uh, some of our initial uh, specs. It's the third iteration of our like improving on, on the idea and kind of zooming into how to build it. So we're working a lot on the idea. So when we actually go to build, it'll be uh, faster, cheaper, and more efficient. So building mini games. And then the goal is for these to be utilized by other games and third parties. So eventually we want to have an API where they can integrate it white labeled into their system. For example, if you have a game and you want people to win uh, game assets through another game, a mini game, you can integrate our mini game and uh, people can win your assets there. That's one of the uh, use cases that we're looking at providing specifically for that. So yeah, I think I'm, I'm very curious about questions, to be honest. Fantastic, yeah. So it looks like my, uh, my video might be rugging, but my audio seems to be fine. So I'm gonna read uh, read a couple of these out. Um, let's start with Matt. Uh, will the different games share an art direction slash a setting in particular? So right now, um, right now I would say no. <laughs> but uh, ask me again in six months, and I'll I'll have a clearer answer. I don't think so. Is probably the best answer I have for now. There there is potential for that to, for it to become like a game universe. But right now we're just. Uh, building the first one so we'll see if there's a uh, something that really ticks with uh, with people really checks all the boxes for that and then we'll implement it throughout if it really makes sense and eventually we want to upgrade the games where you can modify them a little bit for especially for integrating inside your own projects perfect all right so i'm going to hit you with uh at least two more questions and then we need to move on to our next game to to try and uh keep on with time here but yeah, of course from jrp uh ecosystem plays seem to be a trend will you allow for games to be added or will they only be added via your team so games as in uh, different games from the ones that we're building is that what you mean like third party games So right now, any, anyone, on that yeah, yeah. anyone can bring yeah. uh, a prize that's been um, approved. For example, uh, an NFT collection that's been approved, you can create a game with that if you have an NFT from that game and you have currently if you have MetaMask. So anybody can create a game on our platform at the moment. And we're planning on keeping that functionality and expanding it. So a specific game. Fantastic. 
adding more games in the future, we'd like to integrate third-party games as well, like partner with other companies with games and, and add more mini games that way. But first, we have to prove the concept with our own uh, kind of mini games on uh, game engines as well, not just custom development like we've done so far. So broaden the scope. Perfect. Philip, there's a bunch more questions in there. Folks uh, folks are super interested in what you're doing here. So I think what we may do is have you uh, follow yeah, up with those in the chat, chat, if that's all right. Yeah. And I'm streaming on YouTube Great at job. the same time. So. <laughs> all right. Hey, <laughs> at least one of us is streaming. Shout out to Philip for streaming. Thank you. All right. I'll jump into chat. Thanks. Cool. Thank you. All right. Next up, Founder Dead. Founder dead. Yo, test, test, test. Coming in live can you, can you in me? clear. Yes, sir. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you for hosting this wonderful event. Nice to see people building games, still believing in the game fi, and <laughs> keeping the spirits alive. So let me, without any further ado, let me share my screen and get into, into the game. Can you guys see the screen I'm sharing? Yes, we can. Rip, founder dead. Founder dead. So first of all, um, I think I'm going to start with introducing the team. So we're a small team of futuristic creators using Web3 and VR to shape the next generation of entertainment. Uh, it's me, Tomukas One. I'm the game designer developer together with my sister, Agnodurte. Uh, she's 3D animation, and also my girlfriend, Darkness Pixie. She's doing these cool VRM interoperable avatars and also the concept art for, for the games and making everything thematic. Uh, starting off uh, with the mission. Uh, we have been in, in the Web3 space trying to make games and everything for a couple of years uh, now, and we just found that it's, it has bad reputation from Web2 world. People think it's just Ponzi games and gambling. And honestly, it's true. Like, this is not just a misconception. That is true. And we've been trying to evade that thing, trying to create different games while leverage, leveraging tokens and found that it's just not happening. And so we decided to, with this game, we decided to move into a bit of a different direction and try to portray Web3 in a positive light and use this game as a way to get some adoption from Web2 World to, to kind of uh, destroy this illusion that Web3 are always just gambling and scamming. So about the game itself, uh, Founder Dead is a narrative, narrative driven adventure game about a character named Ember. So he, this guy is a Rubian named Ember. So we're kind of putting our own Rubian's brand uh, inside the game. He's on a mission to revive an NFT collection after its original founder has passed away. Uh, so basically it's a, um, it, it's a kind of like a satire comedy game where um, if you know the popular meme that, um, when a collection mints out, right? A collection mints out and there's somebody in Discord writing an announcement that, oh, unfortunately the founder has died, right? So a rug. And, and basically in this game, there's a fictional NFT collection, um, which uh, this Ember guy has over-invested in. And when the founder was found dead, uh, he decided to turn this around and try to derug the collection. So I wanna give a little bit of, of a demo here. Uh, let's see if this if this is gonna load up all right and um yeah and let me know if it's if it's gonna lag for you in in the stream then probably we'll have to uh to, to skip it but i'm staying hopeful so please give me a second okay cool looks good so far okay if not lagging right if everything's okay nope we're good to go very good so a great tragedy has befallen the ruby world Founder of the most hype NFT collection of the year, Poopy Boxers, has passed away. Coincidentally, he died right after the collection had fully minted out in a record-breaking time of 42 seconds. However, there might still be hope for Poopy Boxers. A brave Ruby named Ember has decided to take it upon himself to keep the flame burning, because he has put all his life savings into collection, being from his generational wealth. For Ember, it's do or die. There is no roadmap, no plans or schemes. To succeed at turning Poopy Boxer's hype level to the max, he will rely on vibes alone. LPG. And basically, you're just walking around, interacting with different things. See? Press E to see the burger. 
press E to chat with Fox, right? Different things. I don't want to spoil too much, but basically, oh, press E to adore duckling. People, people. How cute, right? You also you can also get some items. But as you can see, the game is fully 2D, right? I'm sorry, not 2D, fully web 2, right? You just go in, the game starts, and you're having a good time. Also, some advertisement for the Rubians, right? But that's basically it. And there is one little thing I'm going, going to spoil. I'm not going to press it, but I'm going to spoil is you can well, connect with your wallet, but only optionally. Uh, you can press E to connect your wallet. Um, it's going to be a very fun conversation. So if you want, if you want to play this, I don't want to like spoil too much. But you can optionally log into the wallet, and that determines the outcome. When you beat the game, you either it, it, it either says the end, or if you have logged in, you're getting some little nice prize from us. So this way, um, oh, and also, please make sure to notice these podiums. I'm going to get to them in just a minute. Check out these podiums. I'm going to talk about them in just a minute. And now I'm going to get back to, this, to the slides. So, um, uh, okay. so basically, time um, yes? heads up on time. You got about uh, four minutes. Cool. I have uh, that's plenty. So people want to learn, but they hate learning. Uh, through storytelling, uh, like we, uh, through the jokes, right, and, and plot, we want to tell people how NFTs work, uh, about wallet security, so um, and also explain through these quests about Web3 culture. So there's like you talk with people, complete the quests, get some items to them, and then you eventually find out find out find out some big uh, plot behind everything. And uh, so like th we want to like get this as a kind of like an educational tutorial game. Uh, we, uh, this game we participated in December in the Solana's Game Jam uh, called Speedrun and we won the popular vote. People really liked the game. We got some raving reviews uh, and we decided to move all along with it to try and make it into something a bit bigger. For the monetization part, uh, while there's not going to be any like tokens, NFTs, like part of the game influencing the, uh, the gameplay in any way, those podiums that I taught, uh, showed you, right? Those podiums, we, are, we want to put in 3D NFTs of uh, ecosystem artists inside the game and use this game. So this like, it has like, what, 10 minutes of gameplay, right? And we want to use the game as a curation platform. So we want to get 3D artists to place their 3D NFTs, right? And people are just invited to play. Like the game is like the marketing, right? People go uh, to play the game while they also can just move around if they find a 3D artists that they like, they can just press and connect to the wallet and then mint, right? But without that, they can just fully play through the game and just get, um, and enjoy the free experience, right? And get this the vilification of the, mis the, the vilification of Web3. So, and also, yeah, we want to sponsor the Rubian holders. So who, those people who have Rubians, they get priority to list their 3D NFTs in our games. Audience. Uh, students, uh, high school students and college students to learn about the new world of tomorrow and about the, about the money. And also age 1830 web three natives, people who are already in the industry who want to play 10 minutes to have some laughs and relax. And also to maybe after it, use this game as a resource for rookies. When they join in, they can say, hey, try this game. This can be a nice little way to get yourself onboarded and be in touch with the culture from the start. Uh, for the adoption, we want to take this game to schools uh, to like to IT classes, and since the game is web browser based, right? People just uh, kids can just sit in the class. We say open up the game, they play it through, and we can uh, pitch them a little bit, tell them about them, and get them into the ecosystem. And also, we want to get into like these co uh, conferences, events, set up some computers to have people come in and play. And maybe after they finish the game, they can get some limited edition promotional NFTs. Uh, the community uh, is all about the community. We, through these games, we want to grow community of creators. So m later on, people can add their own little things into the, these games. And also for our track record, we started in 2020, launched a couple of VR games, uh, won two game jams of Solana, and now we're currently on the SDK from Solana Foundation. We're currently developing Solana SDK for Godot game engine to allow people to make games easier. So this is also a way for us to get people into our community to play, and we show us ourselves as a leader um, of like in all those integrations, so people can use our games as examples. Yep, and that's gonna be it. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much, and I'm turning Fantastic. off the screen share. You did great, man. That's uh, <clears throat> it's funny when a when a game's IP just like reaches out and grabs you by the shirt collar. Uh, you did a great job there. Uh, all right, panelists, questions, questions, hit us up here. Let's see here. Uh, Matt, uh, you mentioned VR at the beginning. Can you elaborate on that? Uh, yes. So, so thing is, 
Uh, I've started my, let's say, game career um, through VR. Um, I was fully into, into VR. I was like, classic gaming is dead. Uh, after playing some VR games, I was like, there's no way I'm going back to playing computer games. So I've like spent like what five years developing VR games, learning about the multiplayer, everything, and then I found out about NFTs through like VR, then Metaverse, and NFTs, and I got into sucked into this wormhole of NFTs. Try to make a game integrating both VR, V sports game with NFTs, but that is like two niche, two niche audiences, and it just wouldn't work. So right now, what I'm doing is I'm setting VR a little bit aside, focusing on NFTs. But through these NFTs, as I mentioned before avatars right we want to upgrade our nfts to fully v uh, interoperable vrm avatars so and this is going to be our re-entrance into vr right so avatars would go to vr chat we use vr as pro, uh, for like marketing for posts for promotions and stuff like that and eventually we're going to get back to integrating nfts with vr when the time comes so for now we're just going to be like teasing spoofing showing and doing things like that very good very good let's see here shy uh, ask the engine slash tooling used. And I think you may have just yeah, covered right. that, but anything else you'd add? Yes. So for, for engine, yeah, we, I, I already told you it's Godot. And the thing is that I've been on Unity for, what, eight years now? And since this disruption to, with the new fees thing, right, where people got re really mad for, uh, about Unity, I decided this, this could be a nice opportunity for me to try out Godot. Um, but for unfortunately, Godot didn't have any Solana SDK. So I found myself a teammate who was doing something on Godot. And we applied for the foundation grant. We said, this is important. We need to go to Godot. And they said, sure, go and try that out. So basically, we're using our own tool, right? We're using the tool and creating the games using it as like a, for testing, right? So, so yeah, and it's actually like we're moving along pretty well uh, since since the game has been made we've added like candy machine so people can mint their own collections so i think this can be a nice entrance for gamers uh, to oh, i'm sorry for new game developers uh, to use the sdk that is to go to godot and use the sdk only for cr minting their own collection right so because currently minting is really boring you go to like some website there's like one description picture and mint now right and we put it. We, we can want, uh, we want to say that go try Godot, right? Get 3D, 2D, whatever, mix it up, make it creative, make it fun, and have minting experience be interactive. So yeah, this is kind of where we're going. So we're both doing SDK and the games. And like we, uh, one very important thing that I uh, I wanted to say is that the the name of the game is to be nimble and fast and make uh, short term games, games that like you can just play through and move on because people don't have the attention spans now to sit on like card games, MMOs and everything. So our kind of mindset is to do a lot of uh, little games that last for a short amount of time and focuses on brand. The brand always has to stay there. So whatever games we make, Rubians, Rubians this, Rubians that. And so the games can live and die, but with every little failure or success we have, Rubians only go up. So yeah. Fantastic. And then, uh, so we got a couple more questions, but this is a good one. Uh, JRP, how do you plan on making money with this uh, particular endeavor? Yeah, very, very, very good question. So um, in our games, as I said, I mentioned, I want them to be free. So, um, and I mentioned that we want to have like three artists um, showcase their artwork and we have our, our game as like the curation. So of course it would take some sort of a cut, right? We, we bring the soul to those art pieces so that they're not sold on random marketplaces. They're sold in our special game, right? So we, of course, take, we, would, we would take like what, 5, 10% from their purchases. This could be one way of, of making money. And additionally, even though we don't want to make money from the game itself, we want to make money from everything around it. So I would like to make NFT merch, like furniture, which people can buy, buy as like NFT furniture and place it in their, what, three land rooms or whatever um, platforms, like for Web3 social platforms you may have, right? So like promotional NFTs, um, um, furniture, some fun things, collaborations with others. So we want to make money from the brand itself, not from the game. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right, folks. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for presenting today. It's really cool to see your project. Thank you. All right, folks. So we have one other guest set to present now, but I think there may have been a scheduling mishap. But I do not see them on the stage. So we'll try and get them scheduled for, uh, for another session later today. Speaking of which, we have two more sessions. Uh, so at 8 a.m. Pacific, 
and at 11 a.m. Pacific, we have another, gosh, at least 11 teams, maybe 12 teams. Uh, so make sure you're tuning in for that. It'll again be hosted in the Discord, hopefully with less technical issues. I want to give a quick shout out and thank you uh, again to all the games who have presented today. You could be anywhere in the world, but you decide to take time and share your project with us. Thank you. Same thing for our panelists. Uh, again, you could be busy at work, taking care of things, but you chose to be here to support early stage Web3 game builders, and we appreciate you for that. And of course, all of our sponsors. So Sequence, uh, Knights of the Ether, Game 7, Arbitrum, Web3GG, Blockchain Game Alliance, uh, Blocksafe, Calman's Forge, The Roundtable, and all the different prizes that they've put together for these teams to compete for in our, uh, in our Demo Day finale. With that said, panelists, so let's see, we got Matt, we got the Dragon, we got Doctor, we got Max, we got JRP, Hopefully I didn't miss anybody. If you can, go ahead and drop your vote for what you felt was the most interesting or novel project from this first session. And to help you, because we've seen a lot, I'm going to type them out again, okay? So you have The Uprising. You can go ahead and react to these if that's easy enough for you. We have Land, Labor, and Capital. You have Game Land. You have Puzzled Space. You have Founder Dead. And finally, oh, actually that is it. Because the last person we need to get booked into a different set. Okay, so uh, panelists, if you could either jump on stage or uh, react to these with which one you felt was the most interesting or novel, whoever gets the most votes will move on to our finale. Ooh, Uprising. Uprising taking a strong lead. Rob from, oh, okay. We've got Founder Dead. <laughs> the votes are piling in. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's a one reaction difference. Two reaction difference. All right. I'm calling it. Gavel. Hit it. Rob, Uprising, you are moving on to our Demo Day finale. We'll get uh, dates and times coordinated with you and the other folks who are winning. Now, for the games that are participating, uh, again, shout out to our sponsors. They've put together a tremendous prize pool uh, valued at a little bit north of $6,000 across all the different things they're doing. So excited, excited to see uh, the winners there. Everyone here is a winner. Thank <clears> you for sharing your project with us. And uh, Doc, what you got? Yeah, can I just say something? I just want to say that everyone that presented did a bang-up job. Each of these games have really unique qualities, and judging it was really hard. So uh, keep up the great work. I love to see all of it, and just uh, GG's to everybody. Nice. I will add, too, so... We, we do anticipate doing these more often. Obviously, there's bumps and bruises anytime you do something for the first time. So as a, f as a founder, as a game team, if you have any feedback, um, painful or constructive, I'll take it all. Uh, don't hesitate to let me know. You can drop it in general or whatever. Um, for the VC panelists, folks who have money, who are looking for nice places to put it, there will be a... Uh, document shared after this with all the teams, their contact information, decks if they're raising, all that good stuff. But that's it. I won't drag it on anymore. Appreciate every last one of you. Thank you for showing up to our first ever Game Demo Day. And we will catch you in about an hour and 45 minutes. <laughs>